Thank you. Um, my topic for my talk here is Svemal automated malware analysis of the whole Swedish web. And as you can see, I worked very hard on the design of this. I call this Nordic minimalism. Uh, I'll start the talk with my favorite part, the part where I get to brag about my career a lot. And you can't really stop me because I'm up here and you're down there. So um, I work at Entity Security since the year 2014. I used to be an IT security analyst, and now I'm a threat intelligence analyst. Uh, we're also looking for more analysts. You can find our job ads at the usual websites. I used to work at Security in Copenhagen, and I've also done freelance vulnerability research for the initiative and stuff. This is also my first talk at the conference ever, so I'm kind of nervous. But <laughs> yeah, enough of the career bragging nonsense and on to the actual content. Um, Svemal is a hobby product that I've been working on since December of last year. Uh, it was inspired by a talk by some guy from Endgame in the US uh, that scanned, I think, parts of the Alexa top list using um, sandbox technology. Svemal doesn't do that. I modified the idea uh, quite a bit. Uh, it scans the whole Swedish web or as much as of it as possible using signature-based technology, not sandbox-based. Uh, Signature-based security technology has gotten a bit of a bad rap in the last couple of years, uh, but it's good for some, some stuff. Uh, for this use case, I find that it's uh, less resource consuming and expensive to do signature based stuff than sandbox stuff. Some issues are also harder for sandboxes to find. Like, uh, <coughs> I have uh, one signature that looks for uh, um, black hat hidden porn SAO in websites. Uh, and, and that type of thing would be hard for a, a sandbox to find since. It's not actually hacking anything. There are no like event logs that where weird stuff happens. It's more like this is a suspicious, and they should look into it. So signature-based uh, systems can do that, that much better than sandboxed ones. Okay, uh, we begin by constructing the URL list for the uh, for the um, scan. And this is like the potentially dull part. I do this a little quicker than intended. We have .se and .nu top-level domains. Um, and in Sweden, this is e easier than to do than in some other countries because you can download uh, sound files from the IIS Internet Stiftelsen in Sverige from a certain website, whereas in other countries you can't do that. Um, th then, then you get to bind uh, sound files and you convert those to, to a list of domains. You do uh, DNS lookups for A or C name records, both for the actual domain and with www dots pretended uh, uh, just to see if there's like a website or if this domain is just registered or it only serves mail or so. We also add uh, manually some Swedish sites that are, are other top level domains such as our lovely uh, official tourist website jetteborg.com. Uh, the university world is also a special case in that it, it likes to have four level host names with um, institutions as subdomains. So you get www.math.uu.se for the mathematical institution at Uppsala University or so. Uh, then we end up with a URL list of uh, about one and a half million URLs with some weird stuff that we have to remove. Uh, at this stage, we have a URL list, so we start scanning. The SVML scanning system um, uses P PHP CLI running uh, with multiple processes on some VPS servers that were bought from different ISPs, different countries, uh, and they all run Debian. Uh, the scripts uh, use curl to fetch stuff and regular expressions to match. Um, and regular expressions is a signature-based te technology, so it's nothing new and trendy like machine learning. And I don't even do formal parsing, like some people say that you should always do for HTML. I find that this works for this use case. Uh, we have predictable patterns where the spaces in the malware and so on end up in exactly the same spots uh, all the time. And there's sort of few changes. The AI tester so st tends to stay the same for month on end. Uh, Svimal doesn't pen test anything. It's, it's uh, 
uh, like, like the OpenVAS uh, automated pen test scanning system. It's just fest fetching URLs and, and looking at what it gets back, even though it fakes some HTTP headers to uh, ch check for what happens if you uh, access the sites with old Internet Explorer or new Chrome or so. Uh, so what does it look for? It looks for hacked sites, malware, and other suspicious things. Uh, what it finds, it saves on logs. Uh, there, there are three um, types of um, redirection systems that it looks for in particular. The EI test, pseudo dark leech, and seamless. All three of which redirects to, re, uh, to exploit kits, especially re-exploit kits, which is the biggest one nowadays. Uh, at least EI test and pseudo dark leech are kind of camera shy and tend to disappear when you observe them because they they, they notice that you're doing something and will block you for 24 hours or block you forever, or they will switch off because it's the weekend, or they, they will dislike your geographical position or so. So to do the, do this and, and find all EI test sites is a bit of a hassle because they, they're trying to avoid this consciously, I think. I also have signatures for, for uh, rig exploit kit URLs to find those in the, the fetch data. They, however, change patterns quite often, so one has to be aware of this. Uh, next, we have two um, social engineering um, uh, signatures that we also match for the EI SOC ENG and the Joomla stat dot. Uh, EI SOC, SOC ENG um, shows a, a, a screen where, where you're missing the Huffler text font, and you should download the Chrome font pack and stuff uh, to try to fool you into downloading Windows XF files containing ma uh, ransomware or similar. Joomla Statlot is not the official name of it, I just invented that, uh, but because the file names of the hacked files that it, it introduces into Joomla sites are uh, stat and then three hexadecimal digits and then dot PHP. It tries to make you download uh, fake Adobe Flash players that lead to banking trojans. There's a signature for defaced sites, uh, which searches for a few handles of, of known uh, skiddies that do website defacements or similar. Uh, there's a signature that's called dodgy, that, uh, that's both for testing and new problems that I read about in some paper somewhere, uh, and also smaller problems that, like the previously mentioned, uh, black hat hidden porn SEO with links 12,075 pixels to the left of the screen, so you can see the <laughs> the porn links. There are also two generic um, signatures that look for suspicious uh, uh, top-level domains in URLs, such as .top and .xyz, that in my experience often host malware, and URLs that contain um, IPv4 addresses instead of host names. Uh, the, the pros of generic signatures such as these is that they can find problems that you didn't intend to find if they're too, too new or too obscure or so for, for you to know about. Uh, the cons of generic sign uh, signatures like this is that they uh, tend to uh, tend to have a higher false positive rates than the other ones. So it's uh, important to handle the FP problem with generic signatures. Is SVML follows iframes and script tags on the fetched pages in the uh, URL list. It doesn't recur, so it's only one level of fetching. And there's a catch here, so it doesn't uh, fetch stuff from jQuery.com or so all the time, but it only fetches, fetches and checks it once. Uh, when we've done a whole run uh, on one VPS server with some particular setting, uh, I have other PHP scripts to double check the log entries and the same data for FPs to, to increase the quality of the generated blacklist. So a couple of these runs from various uh, machines lead to a release of the blacklist. The latest release of the SWML blacklist is number three, and it has 245 entries. 56% uh, of these are run on WordPress sites, 34 on Joomla, and 10% on others. Uh, and I think that it's already usable in production as a complement of the security solutions. Um, SVML has, uh, through its life, found some problems in some notable sites that are mostly fixed by now. And uh, here's a list of Sveriges offentliga inköpare, SOE, Sybium Nasiet, Kungliga Konstverkskolan, Svedma, 
Guldnyckeln, Exet, Sandhusskolan i kommun, säger hon ett. People Access och Stefan Sundström. And I've only bothered so far to inform sites that I, I personally find notable because to inform the others seems like a time and energy sink <laughs> to, if people aren't so technical, try to make them unhack their sites can be <laughs> a time sink. Any volunteers to help with this would be welcome there. Um, and uh, I have some future plans for Svemal as well, um, such as making it into a real crawler. So far it's only fetching URLs in the URL list that I generated, and then it, then it fetches um, iframes and scripts, including in the fetch page, but to actually make it follow links and handle stuff like that would make it uh, scan more of the Swedish web with, with real crawler. And, and another problem is uh, with the camera show sites uh, with EI tests and uh, pseudo-doc leech infections. Um, uh, to, to try to handle this problem, some kind of distributed computing solution with, uh, where it goes out to hosting company APIs and creates sites and uh, lets the site scan all, all sites with the letter P and then send logs back and then destroy itself. So the, 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 the IPs that scan become more dynamic and unpredictable would, I think, help with that problem. Uh, finally, a, a future plan for SVML will be to scan for more malware and perhaps uh, other exploit kits such as uh, Terror or so. Um, there's a gitlab.com account for SVML where you can uh, download releases of the blacklist. This talk will be there soon. And I also decided to open source the library part of SVML, libsvml.php, which is like the brain of it with, with all the signature scanning and so on. I will not uh, open source the whole thing at this point. And finally, the project has a Twitter account with information about SVML and other uh, SOC and threat intelligence type material. And that's all really. Any questions? Ooh, sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, so out of the companies that you contacted to inform them that they spread malware, how many actually responded? It's a little funny because they don't really respond, but they often fix the sites. So, so they have some problem with me somehow. <laughs> Anyone else? No? Oh, yeah, one in the back. From one of the organizers, no less. <laughs> so, so you'd say it's like mostly WordPress sites that are the, the target of this, first of all? Yeah, from what I've found when I've generated the last uh, third blacklist is that it's 56% of, of the whole blacklist that's running on WordPress. Uh, I'm not sure how, how patched they are after using very, very small and unknown uh, plugins or so, which they shouldn't, but, 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 but it's certainly WordPress. And, and uh, guessing, of course it would be, do you think that it's, it's mostly like automated scanners and infectors, or do you think that some of those are targeted? It's hard for me to say really uh, exactly how they're hacked and why and how automated it is. It's, it's hard to guess really. But, but looking at the results, does it look like the, it, it's from the same source, many of these things. That's also hard to say, really. Yeah, but I'm guessing it could be, yeah. yeah. All right, thank you. Anyone else? All right, so join me once more in thanking Ulf and Lin. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back with our next speaker in just about 10 minutes. Thanks.